There are renewed efforts focused on making it a lot easier to fire federal government employees. And not just some of them, but 100% of them. Today we have a little over 2 million federal government employees. And they have protections against getting terminated or fired. In the private sector, workers are at will, meaning that the company doesn't really need a clear reason to fire you. They can just get rid of you. Now in the government, that's not the case. They can't just knock on your door, come in and say, hey, Bob, pack it up, you're out of here. And then Bob puts his belongings into a box and if he doesn't cooperate, then security escorts them out the building. That doesn't exist. Well, people in Congress, they wanna change that. They want to make all federal government employees at will. And here's some of the reasons why. First is to be like the people they serve. The exact quote is that federal employees should keep their jobs based on merit, just like the people they serve. So everyone in the country, they work for companies, and if they're not performing well, they can get the ax. Well, when it comes to companies and corporations, profit is really the lifeblood. If you do not have profit, you don't have anything else. So despite what a company says it focuses on or what its vision is, it comes down to pretty much profit. Profit is the main motivator. Now in the government, it's not like that because all the money that we're using is taxpayer money. There is no profit. There is not a huge overhanging motivator to constantly maximize efficiencies for profit. The second reason is to terminate federal government employees currently in this system, it wastes a lot of taxpayer dollars. And there's definitely some truth to this because after you do your 12 month probation, you have protections. And so if your supervisor is trying to get rid of you for poor performance, there's a long process where there's a PIP that's involved, performance improvement plan, where they're monitoring the progress of your performance. It could be up and down like the stock market, right? Some months you could be down, some months you could be up, and it takes a lot of support and documentation in order to do the process of terminating an employee. And once you have enough documentation, they can go ahead and turn around and give you an appeal. And then all of this is costing taxpayer dollars. The appeal process, the paperwork, the filing, the supervisors, the human resources, everyone's spending time. Time is money. In this case, time is taxpayer money. And speaking about that, the third thing is they want to completely redo the appeal process. They basically want to get rid of the appeal process. They want leadership and the executives to have the power and the authority to make the changes where they see necessary so the government can be more of an agile organization. It can pivot. It can shed poor performers retain good performers and keep going towards whatever its objectives are. And there was a book that came out recently called Mandates for Leadership that basically suggests that the federal government, the employees in the government, they have too much power, all the powers with the employees. So even a president that comes, comes into office, they don't have the power to just snap their fingers and to terminate a lot of these government employees. And here's my thoughts on this. So if you want to make government workers at will employees, like the private sector, right? Like the people that they serve. Then when it comes to the salaries of people in industries that are making way less than the private sector, you have to increase the salaries. You cannot have a lawyer in the government making 70,000 when his counterpart is making 300,000. I mean, something's not right there. If you wanna make it reflect the people that we serve, don't just stop with at will employment. Because if you think about it, there's two main reasons why people are drawn into the government when you're talking about from a benefit standpoint. One is the security and stability. Everybody talks about this government jobs, stability, security. And the second thing is the pension. So if you get rid of like half of the reason why people even entertain getting a government job, it's gonna be hard with the recruiting, with the retaining, retaining high quality employees. I mean, are they gonna be sticking around? This bill was actually proposed last summer, but the Democrats had control of the house. So they're reintroducing it again. A lot of people, they don't think that this is gonna go far, but they're making efforts. And it's just not one, two, or three people. This bill has 14 co-sponsors that are all in agreement with pushing this through. And it reflects the mood of the country when you're talking about a tough economy. You're looking at where can we make cuts? The national deficit, the budget is constantly on the news. Are we gonna default? Are we not gonna default? They're looking at cutting things. This is what they wanna cut. I'll tell you right now, a couple of people that I talked to on the private sector, 
they don't think the government the government job is a good deal. They say the main reason that people go towards it is for safety and security. And that's the one thing they're trying to cut here. So they say a lot of the people that work for the government, they're risk adverse. They don't want to, they don't want to risk it. But at the same time, there's people in the government. I talked to some people in the EPA. They're passionate about clean air. They're passionate about making the earth a better place to live. There's engineers that I know that I've talked to and they would never consider working in the private sector solely because they have the, they have the power to make an impact in the government like, like nowhere else. But the passion to serve, the passion for the mission, that's usually not talked about. That's something that's kind of underneath the surface. What we talk about is, oh, these people must be lazy. Oh, these people are wasting a ton of money. Then there's the idea of deep state. People are afraid of deep state, which is the idea that there's a handful of government officials or military leaders that are secretively controlling the policy in this country. And with this idea of deep state, you have to understand when a president comes into office, they're bringing in all their own, all their own people. The, the executive branch, they're all nominated by the president and they're confirmed by the Senate. So when you're talking about the top of the government, that's being replaced every few years. There are some positions that are not replaced. There are some career positions. If you remember, which I'm sure you do, you remember Dr. Fauci? He was a career position. So they, they couldn't replace him. They couldn't like snap their fingers and fire him. There was a way to remove him, but it went through the whole, the whole government protection that we were talking about earlier. He fell under that. He wasn't just a political appointee. Now I'm sure somebody will comment maybe that this will never happen. We'll never allow it to happen. But do not get complacent and think that it's not a possibility. Everything is a possibility. Over the last four decades, there's multiple things I thought would never happen. And they happen and they keep happening. So you need to be aware of the possibilities. What are people thinking? What are the leaders in Congress? What are they thinking about? Now, if you're watching this and you want to know what's the big deal about working for the federal government, what are some of the benefits? We talked about some of the benefits, but what are some of the perks? What perks come with a government job? If you want to know that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.